And this is Good News with Dick Baumbach. I'm Jeff Heiser from Success and Intention Lifestyle, and I have Mr. Baumbach here and his good news. How are you, Dick? I am doing great, Jeff, and I've got some good news this week. That is fantastic. You know, last week you told us that you were going to lead in with um, something about the media refusing to do something. Yeah. Now, right now, the, this is only the French media. They are refusing to glorify terrorists, and so they are banning. And this is not the government. This is the media saying, wow. no, more, no more are we going to show the sensational photos. And there are actually a couple of media outlets over there that said, well, we want to show the whole story. Well, the public has said, no, we're not going to buy your publication. Wow. Now, is this just publication or is this, no, you know, this TV, TV and re everything. everything? Wow. And they're basically saying, the public is saying, if you um, glorify these people, I'm sorry, we're not going to listen to you. We're not going to watch you. Thank you very much. Take care. Do you think we could get that kind of a ban here? Well, see, I think that, that hopefully that is going to start moving over to this country. Yeah. You, you know, in, in the end of the last show, I was talking about in some of the things I learned in the military was about uh, how we, how you address some terrorist groups. And they're only doing this for the sensational reporting. Exactly. You know, and, and that's why they, they blow up, you know, big things or they kill a lot of people because they want this coverage to make them look like they're so evil. And, and I think that the media now led by France is picking this up and saying, hey, wait a minute here. Because if we ignore them by people are going to say, well, maybe I shouldn't do this. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And let me ask you a question. Do you think that some of the people that like leave our country to go be with these different groups are doing it because of the sensationalism? I think that's part of it, but I think it's also they're they're wandering in life. They they don't have a set goal yeah. or a set position. Do do you think that if they if they um if they were to ban it here, that as many people go, would go there as, as now? No, see, I don't think they would, Jeff. I think that people would say, well, I'm not going to get the attention I right, really want. Right. I think that would be a good idea. Even though I, I'm a firm believer in the First Amendment and all that, I don't believe we should be giving these people no. any kind of airtime. No. Your next good story, and this one, I have to tell you, is one of my most favorite and and I actually teared up when I saw this guy tear up. It was like, oh, my. The employees surprised the CEO who gave them a $70,000 $70, minimum wage with a Tesla. Yes. Now, Unbelievable. And what they did, they timed it to the exact day when he made the announcement of giving everybody in the building right. the 70000 and that's so, crazy. And, and, and again, the media, the other media did pick this up and it was on nightly news. But I thought we should let the world know that. Yeah, oh, this was a good news story. That's now, great. the interesting thing about it is that, you know, initially when this guy did that, some of the people on, on Wall Street said, oh, this company's going to go gone. It's I remember go. that. Okay. Yeah. We well, just guess, made a mistake. This guess, will never work. Right. And guess what's happened? <laughs> He has doubled the Un amount of money. Unbelievable. He is now, it's almost doubled. Uh, in the past year, he went from $3.5 million to $6.5 million. Wow. Uh, and more and more companies are signing up with him because they say, hey, I'll go with this guy. Yeah. And by the way, his company is called Gravity, and this is a free commercial for this man. Well, you know, think about this, Dick. Y y there's a couple of things. First, you have to invest money to make money, right? Right. So who are you going to invest in if you're a CEO? You're going to invest in your company, right? What is your company? Exactly. It's not the product. It's the people. Exactly. And so he invested in his company in, in the most important part of his company. It's, it's crazy. Now, I would like to say, Jeff, if you ever would like to give all your employees $100,000, I, I would sit here 24 hours a day. 
Well, actually, I was thinking 70, but I, I have to have everyone sign a paper that says, I will get a Tesla. Tesla. <laughs> <laughs> a Tesla or that um, Corvette that they tested out at the Space Center this past week that goes over 210 miles an hour right. that is all electric. Yeah. I, I don't know if you saw that, but they yeah. say that, that car costs over a million dollars is oh, what they're going to sell it okay. for. <laughs> but, oh, by the way, and just one link, uh, last thing. This gentleman's name, so we know, because we need to salute him, is Dan Price. Dan Price. He's, he's the man that owns Gravity, and uh, we salute him for what he L- does. Look him up, uh, listeners. Dan Price of Gravity, and yeah. he's getting some free press from us today. Yes. I would love to have him on uh, Success and Intentional Lifestyle and, and do an interview with him. Yeah, sure. I hope he's listening. Dan, uh, Dan Price, hey, if you're listening... And please bring a Tesla for Jeff. Too. I would like to drive your Tesla. Uh, <laughs> your next story is about Michael Jordan. And, you know, there was a point in, in time where I didn't care for him very much. I, 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 I recognized his skills and what have you, but I just didn't know if, if he was really the real deal. He is really the real deal. He certainly With what he just did is amazing. Why why don't you tell us, Dick? Okay. What he did is he wanted to build. He's been quiet, as we all know. Very quiet. He wanted to build trust, again, between the black community and police. So he gave $2 million out of his own pocket, $1 million to the police benevolent, $1 million to the black organizations, so that they can start coordinating with each other how they can help each other. That's unbelievable. And, and he basically, Michael said that, you know, as far as he was concerned, he knows he's been quiet, but he couldn't keep doing this any longer because he has a personal thing with this. In right. 1986, his dad was murdered. <clears throat> wow. And, uh, and the By the police? Was, no, not oh. by the police, but the they, two people who murdered his dad, uh, he's never obviously forgotten. It. Right. Uh, they are serving life terms in prison, he said. So I know what it's like to go through right. this trauma. You know, it's, it's the old saying, the proof is in the pudding. And the people that um, speak the loudest are not not necessarily the people that make the biggest difference. Exactly right. And And this is a perfect example of making a big difference in a big way. Now, one thing I want to give you, though, as a side to make, you know, this good news happy. Yep. Uh, I found this out years ago, and, I, and I, as you know, I don't have too much hair because I wanted to follow <laughs> Michael. But what I discovered... But you can't jump. <laughs> <laughs> well, I used to play basketball. <laughs> um, uh, but anyway, what I found out is Michael, if you remember, he was one of the first guys to be totally bald right. at a young age. Well, what Michael did is when he traveled the country with the Chicago team, right. he had a personal barber who cut his hair every day. The barber was paid 3000 a week. Wow. To travel with Michael to wow. cut his hair. Now, I don't want to say anything, Jeff, but I have I do my own hair. <laughs> no, I know who does your hair. <laughs> one actually one of the best barbers in our area, I would have to say. That's correct. Yes. That is correct. And uh and she does a great job on hair. Yes, she does. Uh your next story is a is another really good one. And it's Southwest Airlines employee becomes girl's buddy during in-flight panic attacks. Yeah, this is a nine-year-old girl named Gabby Schwart, and she was flying from Orlando back up to the uh, New Jersey area. And this is about a week and a half ago, and she has diabetes 1, which causes low blood sugar, right. et cetera. Right, Well. She started having panic attacks, and the mother just couldn't control her. So the flight attendant, he decided to take over, and his name is Garrett. They don't want to use the last name. Derek? Garrett. 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 And what Garrett did, he spent the majority of the flight sitting with her and calming her down, giving her things to do. They hit turbulence as they were coming into New Jersey. 
and calmed her down, and she was fine. And then she stood up at the end of the flight as they got to the, and she said, he wa- she wanted to thank him. Wow. The entire plane stood up Wow. On the floor wow. For Garrett. Now, <laughs> how did Garrett calm her down? I mean, you know, just, I know that, what, was, it, uh, was it adult beverages? <laughs> no, 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 no. No, what he did is he just kept talking to her. Did he have the Xanax or? <laughs> he kept talking to her and playing games with her. Wow. And, and just uh, showing her things in the plane. And, and what, how, how, the way this went viral on Facebook is people started taking pictures of him because she had been screaming on the plane and people were really wow. worried. And then she was fine. And then she stands up as a nine year old. Thank you very much. <laughs> That's and now crazy. She said she's not afraid to fly anymore. Wow. You know, I, I'm not afraid to fly. I, I've, I've flown all over the world, uh, literally all over the world. But I do understand panic attacks because of things that have affected me in my life. I do get um, into a panic mode, very high anxiety. And my wife, she has she has learned over the years how to uh, how to bring me down. And yeah. it's like sometimes you know it's a little bit more difficult. But all she does is she just starts talking to me, and she won't stop <laughs> and it, it takes my mind off of the panic and it's like will you please stop talking to me <laughs> <laughs> well but the thing is remember now if if april can't go with you on a flight it's difficult Southwest sometimes if they will put garrick on the plane yeah a- absolutely you know when she hadn't uh flown with me and there was many trips that she didn't um i always made sure i knew how many seats back from the exits i knew where everything was and it was you know it was difficult sometimes but i would put the headphones on turn on some music and right into my zone and you know sometimes i would relax most of the time i was always on watch (laughs) can we share one other good news story about flying yes i might have shared this in the past about me my first plane trip no okay my first plane trip uh i was 14 years old and I always wanted to fly. And so uh, what I came up with, I worked at a, a candy store. What I came up with is if I saved my money, I could fly somewhere. And the reason I wanted to do this, my uncle kept flying in from Cincinnati for meetings. And I kept saying to my parents, I would love to fly on a plane. So one morning, I went to school. Instead of getting on the school bus, I took a bus <laughs> into the airport. LaGuardia airport. <laughs> And I paid $28 for a round-trip ticket to Philadelphia and uh, got on the plane, (laughs) sat next to a gentleman who said, why are you so nervous? Is this your first flight? No. (laughs) And so I got to Philadelphia, walked across the aisle, got on the plane to fly back to LaGuardia, got the plane, and timed myself to get home (laughs) when the school bus came home. So I walked into the house, and my mother said, where were you? And I said, I was at school. She said, don't lie to me. I said, what do you mean? The school called. You didn't go to school today. So I said, oh. She said, well, where were you? I said, Philadelphia. Don't lie to me. <laughs> so I pull out the, the ticket to the yeah. flight, which my brothers will attest. They witnessed this. And at that point, my dad came out. And announced that I was grounded for six weeks. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you can't do that anymore. No. There, there's no way that you can do that. But back then, I could do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Back then, they didn't have security checks. You exactly could, right. Everybody could walk right up to the gate. You could literally get on a plane. Get on a plane. And, <laughs> yeah. and 28 bucks round trip. New That's York, incredible. You can't even buy a dinner in the airport anymore <laughs> for $28. <laughs> <laughs> but don't say how old I am. I'm, I'm under the age of 28. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, he really is. Uh, so, well, what a great week and in, in good news. And uh, as always, we greatly appreciate you being here um, on Talk Network Radio. And thanks so much, Dick Bombach, for bringing us the great good news for the week. Thank you, Jeff. Talk to you next time. 